Hi everybody, welcome to Sports Wrap Online. I'm Joe Schmidt in the Channel 5 Newsroom along with Tom Pelissero from 1500 ESPN. And we're here talking a little Vikings football today because Leslie Frazier pretty much has his staff now in place. He still needs a running back coach, but he's offered it to uh, the guy from Indy. Uh, let's talk first about offensive coordinator. Probably the biggest position he had to fill. Didn't get Josh McDaniels, the guy he originally went after. Mm -hmm. I got Bill Musgrave. Is, is that a good choice in your mind? It's an interesting choice. Bill Musgrave comes from a West Coast background. He played under Mike Shanahan. You know, he coached with George Seifert. He, he's been around, but he's also been in some different systems. He worked with Joe Gibbs out there, basically ran a version of the Air Coriel scheme. He's worked in Atlanta where they incorporate a lot of things, that Pittsburgh Steelers offense, what you think of with Jerome Bettis pounding the ball up the middle. They do it with Michael Turner. He's been in a few different schemes. From that perspective, it seems as though it fits with Leslie Frazier's philosophy, which is figure out ways to win by running the football. But at the same same time, if you look at Bill Musgrave's track record, you don't find a ton of success at this point no. in his career. And I asked Leslie Frazier about that today, the fact that in 2000, he becomes Carolina Panthers offensive coordinator, lasts four games and resigns. 2003 with Jacksonville, 2004 with Jacksonville, 25th and 29th in scoring. He doesn't exactly have that thing that you grasp onto and say, this guy is a genius, but... He has worked with a young quarterback in Matt Ryan. He's been credited with helping his development. He at least has been in that position, maybe can learn from his mistakes. That seems to be the big focus for Frazier is being able to learn from your mistakes. The other thing about Musgrave is that had uh, Malarkey left, he's the offensive coordinator, Mike Malarkey, the offensive coordinator down in Atlanta. Now, had he left and taken a head coaching job, it was pretty obvious that Musgrave was going to be moved to the offensive coordinator position. And number two, he interviewed with Cleveland. So that tells you at least somebody else was out there interested in what Musgrave can do. Um, the rest of the coaching staff, um, it, I think Singletary obviously is a good move. I think it's nice to have that fire and ice kind of a little bit uh, uh, on your sideline. Uh, he's going to be very interesting to watch when he has that linebacker's coaching role. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you talk about learning from your mistakes. You look at the things that Mike Singletary went through. Now remember, he came in as an interim coach, much like Leslie Frazier, was promoted to that head coaching job, lasted less than two seasons. You would hope if you're Leslie Frazier that maybe learning from some of the things Singletary did wrong, maybe having him there is going to help. And Singletary, for, for all of his faults, is known as a guy who is personable, who can connect with certain players or certain people who are going to turn tune him out. That's just kind of the way it is. But you would think that he comes in with the respect, particularly at that position, where he was one of the best who played in his era you would think that that would go in, is something that would help the Vikings. And you can kind of take a look at the Chicago Bears, who have, I think, three ex-head coaches on their staff around Lovey Smith, and that seems to be a little bit of a trend because, if nothing else, this will be the first time Leslie Frazier goes through it. So he's got to be able to have somebody he can trust, like Mike Singletary, to go to and say, what would you do here? Now, he can also call up Tony Dungy, and he's got others around the league, but uh, he's going to need that. Yeah, uh, compare that to Brad Childress's staff. Brad Childress had never been a head coach either, and who did he fill his coordinator jobs with? Daryl Bevel, who had never been a coordinator, coordinator at the offense at the NFL level. You got Mike Tomlin, who had never been a coordinator at the NFL level, although was highly respected, obviously, and eventually moved on to be Pittsburgh's head coach. And he also brought in a first-time special teams coordinator and then handed it over to Brian Murphy, who had never been a coordinator before. You look at it, one after another, he really had t tried to take the young guys, the up-and-comers, put them in those roles. Kind of the opposite from Frazier. He gets Mike Prefer, who's been around the block in several right. different special teams coordinating jobs. And then obviously with Bill Musgrave having had a couple of opportunities. Promotes Fred Pugich, who was a defensive coordinator at the college level. But again, he's trying to take guys who have experiences and can learn from them. Well, then, of course, the next big decision is going to be who is Musgrave going to coach? You know, who is the quarterback that they are going to build this team around? I think that Leslie Frazier is very smart by saying we're going to run the football because if they bring a young quarterback in, he's going to have to be a game manager before he can be a game changer. Um, and, and that's the way it appears they want to go. Yeah, and I think that that's what you have to do. In my mind, you have to get two quarterbacks. This isn't a matter of going and either getting a veteran to come in or going and drafting somebody. They could, they could make a trade tomorrow for a guy who they think is going to be the starter, but you still have to draft someone. You yep. need to get someone developing in the system and not a Joe Webb who I think at this point it's relatively clear they want to use him in a multi-position role, not try to thrust him in, not really have him compete. Certainly you're going to present it to him as though he's competing for the role, but you want to see other things you can do with Joe Webb. They've got to draft a quarterback, and you also, no matter what, have to get somebody who can come in and in a pinch can play. And not a Patrick Ramsey, not a guy who's been on his couch for right. a couple of years. You need someone who at least has played in the league and has maybe been a backup who's been in a system similar to this. Yeah, and, and and it's hard to find that guy because many of those guys are either retreads like Patrick Ramsey, they're too old, 
or they simply can't do it. Well, look at like Atlanta, what they did, and of course Musgrave was down there when they drafted Matt Ryan. They went and got Chris Redman, who had kind of kicked around the league for a couple of years, but at least was somebody that you could trust had been around similar systems and would be able to function within your offense. You're not going to find a guy on the street who's able to elevate the play at the level of the guys around him. You want someone who can get the ball into playmakers' hands, function in your offense, and make good decisions. I've got an idea. Dante Culpepper. I, now that Childress is gone. I find that really hard to believe. If he couldn't get the call in December, when he had at least been playing in the UFL, he couldn't get the call then when the Vikings were desperate to bring in anyone. I don't see that being the fact. All right, I just threw that out there. <laughs> Tom Pellicero, 1500 ESPN. He's on Sports Wrap this weekend, 1045 on Sunday. It must be ratings because we got the big guy on the show. Thanks for watching.